doing work by hand kind of sucks. Whether it's sawing logs, grinding grain, or hitting things with a hammer, doing repetitive actions like this over and over again is a huge pain. From the perspective of industrialization, humanity's goal has been to find a way to outsource this labor and find more efficient ways to achieve them. In this video, we'll be attempting to recreate a mechanism that was first sketched by Leonardo da Vinci that was centuries ahead of its time as it is now used even today in many industrial purposes and see if we can construct this device that will help with the automation of hammering with the Da Vinci Cam Trip Hammer. With my goal on this channel of building myself up to the industrial revolution starting from the stone age, mechanisms like this are going to be a core topic of interest. As I begin to harness other forms of energy, I'm most often going to be working with a rotational force. But for a lot of these tasks, you need to somehow convert the force of a rotating object into an oscillating movement that a lot of these tasks require. Through history, a few different methods have been employed, including the earliest known sawmill in Hierapolis, which used a slider crank mechanism. Historical trip hammers or tilt hammers often used a method with a large wheel that catches and pushes down and releases a heavy hammer. However, around 500 years ago, famous inventor Leonardo da Vinci sketched a design for a simpler and more compact trip hammer using a spiraling cam design. Let's see if we can build a device that will help us with hammering moving forward. First up, let's fell a dead tree that needed to come down anyways for a source of some large pieces of wood as well as some additional wood that we can use for future projects. Big hug. Hi. Hi. All right, we need some wood to make the Da Vinci Cam Hammer, the housing for it. So, found some wood right here. Let's see what we got. <laughs> I'm being pretty accurate. All right, I don't know if you'll believe this, but this is the first tree I've ever, <laughs> I've ever chopped down, and it's kind of hard. Are you impressed? I just inhaled some. <coughs> oh, timber! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right, we got the log in studio, so we're gonna cut it into two pieces. The first is gonna be a base for the anvil, and the second is going to be a frame for the follower. Get out of here. Satisfying. There we go. We have our log. We're going to now hew it in order to clean it up. Hewing is just taking the sides off, making it into a nice little square. So I'm gonna take the ax, which I have right here, um, and making little V's in it all the way down is a good way to make sure that it kind of is even on the way. So made my V. Okay. There we go. We got this one hewed. We're going to clean it up a little bit. It is a bit messy. We got the hammer stand, anvil stand, anvil, here, hammer, drill a hole. This is the hammer. It's gonna go bop, 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 because the cam is gonna be spinning and it's gonna hit it while it lifts it up. It's gonna lift it up and then when it drops, it's gonna bop. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Gonna auger out the hole for the hammer handle. Do about four or five of these holes. Well, let's get started. Oh yeah. Ooh. 
All right, so the hole for the hammer, we're gonna do two holes coming in this way that will hold the axle. So hold the hammer, gonna rotate on that. Check this out. All right, so we're getting this anvil into this log. I don't want the log to split, so I'm gonna take the chisel, kind of get some of this material out of here. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna make the cam. Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Lavoit. Lavoit is the number one air filter brand in the United States and on Amazon. They sent me the Lavoit 600S. Now the workshop is finished. I've been able to use the filter in the new space. I was a little skeptical at first. We do have a couple forms of dust collection and an air filter already to remove any sawdust and other particulates in the air. So I wasn't sure how valuable another air filter would be, but I actually found it to be really useful because one of the biggest health risks with work like this is the small particles get in the air and you end up breathing in. So it's really important to take care of that. Caught up in a project and sawing, suddenly there's a bunch of dust in there and not even realizing that I'm breathing it in but the Lavoit system actually detects it and turns it on and starts filtering. Even nicer is the fact that it's synced to an app on my phone. It gets dusty in the room, I get a notification. And then when I should turn on the other collection systems or put on a mask. This is definitely gonna be a really important tool in our workshop. Thanks again to Lavoit for sponsoring our video. Check out some of their products in the link below. Okay, we're gonna assemble the cam. We're gonna use a simple high glue peg kind of method to stick all the pieces together so they're nice and tight. Come back in a few days after it dries and cut it. Dun, dun, dun. Nice. Boy. Nice fit. Alright, so I have some tools here. I'm gonna use them to make the shape of the cam. I made a little ruler using uh, the width of my finger. Very, very accurate. The hammer hand will act as the follower and track along the cam mechanism. When it reaches the point at the top, it will drop via gravity and strike the hammer head on the anvil. The way that we'll get the gradual increase to the shape of our cam is by using our makeshift ruler and gradually increasing the distance from our axle to the end of the cam. Oh yeah, that's nice. All right, then we gotta connect this one to this one. Oh yeah, that to that. Ooh, love to see it. Then that to the final, love it. Alright, so now we have the cam and we need to apply a rotational force to it to make it actually spin. And for that, we're gonna make a crank. Uh, basically, gonna do kind of similar to what I did with the uh, the brace drill. Put a kind of a a Z and that allows you to uh, spin it a lot easier. We need something to help, kind of help it grip the cam itself, otherwise a, a circular thing in a circular hole is going to want to just spin. So we're going to try flattening it and putting uh, a wedge in there that will kind of grip it, hold the cam to it so we can get some good force to it. Got the thing assembled, got <laughs> the thing. Okay, this is our Da Vinci cam hammer. Without the cam, just gonna use a little marking here through the holes, mark where I want the axle to be. There we go. All right, we're gonna drill it out right in the middle. All right, got the axle for the hammer handle. I'm gonna shove it in here, see if it works. Nice.
Perfect. All right, check this out. It goes like this, and it works really nice. We'll see if it works the same when we introduce the very heavy sledgehammer. All right, let's go. It fell off. <laughs> So the hammer keeps sliding off of the cam. I think making the cam wider would have been a good idea because um, it just wants to just go to the side. And also this hammer is really heavy, so I am not very strong. And this just keeps, keeps kind of sliding and making me sad. I think with a few tweaks, it can definitely work a lot better. So we'll see if Andy can make some adjustments. So it just took a few small tweaks to actually get this guy running a little bit more smoother. First thing was just adding a second cam to this. Give it a little bit wider, a little bit more tolerance for uh, any wiggle in the handle and landing on that. Then also added some wood pieces here just to prevent the hammer from wiggling too much. The metal crank was actually starting to bend a little bit as it was using. So I reinforced it with a little bit of a wooden dowel here. Allows it to have a little bit more strength. And also adjusted the housing here to hold the bigger axle and housing all the way around it so it doesn't bounce out. So now it actually works pretty good, I think. All right, so then I was able to uh, try using it out for actual blacksmithing and works pretty good. I would say if anything, it's a little weak. Just because it's dropping from like a foot, we're not, not getting like a full swing. So this is probably more comparable to just swing with a smaller hammer. The obvious solution to add more powers is to increase the size of the hammer. Or I could also try and enlarge the cam in some way so it drops further. I think we're at a pretty decent starting point and allow us to tweak and adjust things as we go. So then the last step will be uh, connecting this somehow to some form of alternative power source so you don't have to actually do it yourself and it's just automatic and you can save all that energy from having to do it yourself. So I'll have to figure out exactly how to do that and uh, that'll have to be its own video. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe and thank you as always to our supporters on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.